Hi, everybody. My name is Eric Valenzuela. I'm the head baseball coach at Long Beach State. Today for Long Beach Classics, we are going to go over and discuss our February 14th opening day victory against Cal. Um, 13 innings, crowd uh, was awesome. Uh, today, helping going over the highlights is associate head coach Brian Peters, assistant baseball coach and recruiting coordinator Daniel Costanza, and, and two of the stars uh, of that game, Adam Seminaras, our starting uh, pitcher for that game and Friday night guy, and senior first baseman Jacob Huey, uh, who got that game winning hit. So, welcome everybody. And, uh, you know, leading up to this, this series, you know, playing a Pac-12 opponent um, like Cal coming off a very good season that they had last year going to a regional, um, you know, and bringing back a lot of guys. Uh, this was going to be a, a, a – this was a, a very, very good weekend team to come into Blair Field, and, and um, they were very physical from an offensive side of things, had really good pitching and, and um, do a really good job. So hope you enjoy, and uh, let's get it going. Going into this game uh, – our report, you know, Cal is a very physical team. Um, they can drive the baseball with a lot of big swings, big physical guys. They got some speed in there as well. So, you know, one of our, you know, our plan with Adam was to, um, you know, just kind of, we were going to mix them up and we were going to, um, you know, throw all of his pitches and, and, um, and kind of see how they were going to react to, uh, you know, not only his located fastballs, his uh, but having to pitch backwards if if we needed to with his changeups and breaking balls, and he was able to to do a good job of adapting um, to to all of these hitters because they are scary, and and um, I thought he did a phenomenal job. So here here are some of the the big pitches early in the game, and it was a zero zero game uh, going into the later innings. So here are some of the some of the bigger pitches he made against you know some of the best hitters here. So here we are in the second. Um, and it's a 3-2 count. We can pause it right here really quick. Um, it's a 3-2 count. Um, <clears throat> and there's nobody on base here. And we just called for a 3-2 changeup, which he has a lot of uh, – and he loves throwing that pitch. And, and, uh, and I'll let him talk a little bit more about, about this, uh, this pitch. But this is something that he does, and, and he's, he's able to do in any count is throw that, uh, that big-time change he has. Is that him there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I mean, I, I have confidence in my changeup when I can throw it in any count. And, I mean, I get excited when Coach Valenzuela calls a changeup, especially in 3-2 counts. So, I mean, that was, that was a fun night. Yeah, so this pitch right here, well, we, we set up, you know, set up middle, and he just uh, is able to throw that 3-2 that change. And there's nobody on base there, and, and so uh, we can go ahead and roll it here. He just catches them, catch them looking here. And so it's a big pitch right there. Now, now if we could pause it for a sec, I think early in the game, you know, early in the game, making a big pitch like that, um, you know, a three, two pitch, you know, with the change up, uh, you know, now if your other hitters in the, in the dugout, um, I think it, it's, I'm not going to say a wake up call, but it's definitely got these guys thinking that he's going to be able to throw any pitch in any county. He's not afraid to do it. So that's, that's a win right there for us with that big pitch three, two in the second. So now we move to the fourth here. Um, with the 2-2 two -two count you know, um, against a big physical kid right here. <clears throat> we get the breaking ball call, set up away. And that's a good quality pitch there, 2-2. Two -two. So we could pause it here again. And I'll, I'll let Adam talk about that pitch, but I'll tell you what, I mean, the, there's a 2-2 two -two pitch, and that's a different feeling than that 3-2 where he's probably going to have to, you know, maybe I'm not going to say lighten up, but, but throw it for a strike. But in that case, he had two two, so he had that extra pitch of freedom, so he was able to let that pitch go. And, and so I don't, I don't, I know that was a little bit a while back for you, Adam. But but that's I'm guessing that's that's how you threw that pitch aggressively. Yeah, well, with the with the curveball, especially since it was my new pitch and it was the first game, first game in college throwing it, I I just wanted to be be aggressive and everything with that curveball. So that was that was the big. Uh, factor that helped me get through this Cal game was that new curveball that Valenzuela helped me out with and um, yeah they didn't they didn't seem to pick it up too well out of my hand so it was a good good bonus so here's the next one now we're at it's a zero zero game still top of the fifth um, we got two outs and a two two count um, and um, 
you know, we, we, I think to this point, probably in the fifth, we had, you know, basically lived on the outside part of the plate with, with our fastball change ups and in that breaking ball for us moving forward with some uh, off speed and, and soft away a little bit. And then we just threw a quality fastball in here. And we catch him looking there. So I don't know if you want to add any to that. That's a, that's a big time pitch right there. It's very difficult to hit for a hitter. Two, yeah. Two. For, for hitters in college, everything is looking, looking to be away. So if you can, if you can live on that inside corner with your fastball, you'll set yourself up for success. We could pause it here real quick. There you go. Um, and so, so now, you know, we're, we're in the fifth, <clears throat> in the fifth and we got an O2 count on, on, uh, on a kid here. And, and, um, you know, the one thing we talk about is, is being competitive. Oh, too, you know, you have the hitters in, in, you know, they're defensive. And a lot of times, you know, Oh, two pitches are, are not even aggressive. They're not, um, you know, they're a pitch that, that the hitter would never even think about swinging at it, whether it's super high or way off the plate or, you know, um, in the dirt and just a non-aggressive pitch. So we talk about that and being competitive Oh, two and, understanding that the hitters are defensive. So this pitch right here is an O2 absolute competitive um, change up that's down. Now it's, it's, it's not a strike. Uh, it wouldn't be a called strike if you were to take it, but it is right there. It's down in the zone and it's a, uh, it's a quality competitive pitch, which he, and again, it's his, you know, I would say arguably he's his best pitch is that change up. So this is a good pitch O2 right here. And, and again, I, I just feel like it was a, you know, just keeping guys off balance, and this was another good one for it. I like, I like throwing changeups. <laughs> well, and I think he has. I think Adam has a has a knack for, you know, understanding that he's. It's he could that changeup ends up being like about three different pitches because he can throw that pitch, you know, four strike o o, you know, or one o or two o or three two. That's going to be middle. He can throw that changeup, you know, that's down and away for a strike. That's a tough pitch. And then he also can throw that competitive one that's down. That's a ball that'll get guys swinging. So, um, you know, those, that's actually like three pitches in one. And he can also do that with his fastball breaking ball. So, um, so this next one, you know, Darren Baker is probably uh, their biggest prospect. Um, and, uh, and he's a very, very tough out. I think in this game too, it wasn't this at bat, but I think he had like a 17 pitch, well, the first inning, wasn't it? That was the first, yeah, the yeah, first inning. Yeah, like a 17-pitch, uh, you know, um, at-bat against Adam, um, which he ended up flying out, I believe. But but uh, so we got him 2-2 here with one out. Um, and Adam really did a good job to, to, to get this uh, – to learn how to throw this cutter. And so this was a hard cutter down and away against Darren Baker. And, um, and again, it was just such a quality pitch against a really, really good hitter. So. That was another new pitch that we learned over the fall on top of the curveball was the cutter slider thing and just overall helped me out with another pitch that they weren't even looking for. Okay, we get in here and again, here we are, sixth inning, 0-0 uh, zero, zero game. You know, I'm just two uh, very good Friday guys getting after uh, each other and we got a 1-2 count. Um, so we call a fastball away here and you know i felt like and, and adam could can talk a little more about this but you know it's a fastball way that's called and and i think adam uh you know was feeling pretty good here and, and just let it rip and and the ball ended up being up in middle but it was high enough to get to get the swing and miss um and again it's just another aggressive uh you know pitch by adam he didn't hit his spot but he definitely let the ball fly and, and probably threw his his hardest pitch of the night here on this one um uh, yeah, I mean, I just I don't want to be passive when I'm throwing fastballs. I try and let them eat, and uh, I put a lot of trust in my command and and know that I can hit that spot. And when you when you put full conviction behind your pitch, it it seems to be a lot more successful than than if you're throwing it half half effort. Some energy there for sure after a big pitch against a, a really good hitter there. So. All right, just to set the scene a little bit now, um, they had just taken out their starter, who did a good job. Um, basically, their starter, we got four hits off of him, four walks, only struck out three times. It's hard to say we did a good job because we didn't score any runs, but we didn't do enough. So he did. He finessed and, and 
and manage. Let's say he managed to, to keep a scoreless through six. Now, we had just met uh, to talk about this new arm. This is one of their back-end pitchers. He's got high-end stuff, um, low to mid-90s with his fastball, um, really good slider. He's got strikeout stuff. So we had just talked about that. So here we are, one out into the seventh. Calvin is up now with a one and two count. Now, part of our deal, um, we feel like we're pretty hard to strike out because of we can get creative with two strikes. Uh, and we work on this a lot, and you're going to see – you're going to see how a lot of the same pitches that Adam was having success with, success with you're going to see against us and see how our versatility and our creativity kind of bailed us out. Now, we're going to, we'll go ahead and run this clip, and you're going to see a, a quality slider thrown by the pitcher with two strikes. It's a very well-located pitch, but again, Calvin is creative, and he's able to at least put the bat on the ball here. So you're going to see him change his posture, uh, gets creative to, to at least make contact with his pitch, and it turns into a nice swinging bunt location-wise. So Calvin's a power hitter. He's big, he's physical, he's a threat. So the third baseman, as soon as he gets to two strikes, has to move back. And he's going to move back farther on Calvin than he is with a couple of our, let's say, less physical hitters. So number one, Calvin's physical presence bought him a little bit of this hit. But because he's got such a power and speed dynamic, you know, this works in our favor. So he is fast, but he also has power, so the third baseman moves back. And I want to make sure that we say when we put on every time we put on a drag bunt, this is what we see in our heads. Like we think drag bunt, okay, maybe it's going to be a hit. But I see put a perfect drag bunt down, put enough pressure on them, they throw it down. We call this throwing it in the snakes here, and put enough pressure on them so they force mistakes. So there's a couple of things that you'll see here: swing and bunt, creative. Calvin hustled down the line, forced a bad throw because it was perfectly placed. Made a good read on this. He, not only is he looking to his right, he's looking for the runner, he's looking for the right fielder, he's looking for the second baseman, but you saw Coach Costanza very active in this. Um, I'll let him talk for a second uh, about what his role is in this in this spot. But that perfectly placed creativity got us to where uh, he was able to stretch that into getting the second base. So, Coach Costanza, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, you know, quickly a couple things. As we watch – so uh, some of these videos, as they continue from the offensive side of things, you're going to notice a couple things that showed up big time in this game. You know, one being these two strike at bats and not just the hits that we got, um, but also some of the really good takes that led to some really big at bats in throughout this game and the, the toughness and the competitive nature that came with these two strikes, um, which is something that, that we try to instill in these players and every guy throughout our program, number one. And then I think it's important to mention that this night, Calvin, and for, for the majority of the season, Calvin hit in the leadoff spot, um, which may be a little bit unconventional uh, as, as compared to where a guy with his speed-power combo would be. Um, but we felt it was really important that, that the lineup turned over to him. And I think that's a testament to the creativity that Coach Peters has with the lineup and obviously, um, you know, the creativity of our players and, and the dynamic that they bring. So I thought that those were two things that are going to show up throughout the course of this video. Um, you know, with that being said, on that play, you'll see, I, you know, I run up the line kind of as far as I can to try and get a good angle um, from where that throw is coming from because there's a lot that's going on with no one on base, right? The catcher's flying up the line. I mean, you could see how far that catcher ran. He ran almost over the fence over there. Uh, the right fielder's coming down, but much like that third baseman being back, that right fielder was playing really deep because Calvin has, you know, some big time power at all parts of the field. So he was way deep um, trying to, trying to limit him from hitting a double. Uh, and the way that that throw came off, that fence is kind of short over there, but because everyone was so far away and Calvin did a really good job of breaking down, looking over his right shoulder, he was able to cruise into second base. And so now we have a runner at second with one out, you know, over there in scoring position in a big spot. This is two strikes again on Malm, and you're going to see the same exact thing. Basically, we've got a, a strikeout slider coming. We have a creative, a creative move by Malm uh, in an effort to not strike out. And then there's a lot of things. I, I have to point out that there is two outs, and that's going to show up here and what you're going to see. Malm tried to call timeout right there, by the way, and the umpire didn't give it to him. So we just got in there and competes. Got that same two-strike slider perfectly placed right into here. And right when he slides in, let's pause it. All right, stop it right there. All right, perfect perfect scenario for us. Um, so one, mom's creativity again with two strikes, just doing his best to not strike out. We, were in a, we have a two-strike approach. Um, and again, if you can compare that to some of those pitches that Adam was throwing, I think our creativity maybe lends itself to, to being a little bit harder to strike out, uh, which is part of the things that we preach. 
Now in this play, obviously the ball never travels more than 80 feet. So if you think about the timing of this play, for Calvin to be able to score from second on a play that only traveled 80 feet and there wasn't like a throw made, a lot of times you can see this same thing happen on a ground ball to short where the shortstop throws it all the way over to first and the runner from second wheels all the way around and it still ends up being a bang-bang play at home. But in this case, the ball was never actually thrown to first base. So for Calvin to score from second means, one, he's fast. Two, he was hustling. And I also want to point out that because there was two outs, and you can see Leonard Jones in the frame right there. He was the on-deck hitter. Had there been less than two outs, we wouldn't have taken this chance. I would have liked our chances with runners on first and third with one out, with Leonard Jones coming up to bat, who's one of our most feared and good and polished hitters. So it's important that this probably wouldn't happen if there wasn't two outs. But with two outs, it was worth the gamble. We took the chance. Calvin was hustling his butt off. And there's a couple of other really cool things here is that you would see if you can back up just a hair, like just a couple of steps right there. You're going to see Leonard Jones is from the on-deck spot. He runs all the way over to home plate to get himself right into that play and do his job to help him slide. And the emotion that comes, obviously, when you score your first run in the tight game on opening weekend is really, really exciting. So there was a lot of cool stuff that went on there. Um, that play from Leonard, uh, we talk about all the time. When you're the on-deck hitter, you've got a job to do. I, we always remind those guys, hey, anytime there's a play at the plate, make sure you're there to help those guys out. And Leonard did his job. He did his spot. And again, to point out that we wouldn't have taken that chance had there not been two outs. Well, I think it's important to mention, too, you know, the, let's not take any credit away from Malm, who obviously did a great job of battling there with two strikes. But there was no quit in him when he didn't make hard contact with the runner at second. And he was flying out of the box. And, I mean, he, he put a lot of pressure on the defense there to, to make a tough play. And because of that, you know, the pitcher left his feet. The ball rattled around, and, and obviously Calvin flying around scored. You know, that's that's a big – that was a big momentum swing for us and, and two really good hustle plays right there. All right, now we'll, we'll keep it right here and just kind of set the scene again. Now we just took our first lead of the game, and it kind of it, – it gives everybody a little bit more confidence. Now we have a lead finally, um, and it helps us press the button. So I'm going to go back to our original meeting. When we make a pitching change almost every time, we're going to meet and we're going to talk about – what this pitcher does, how he pitches, but also how he holds runners. So as we met just three hitters ago, four hitters ago maybe, um, you know, we talked about what, what are you going to look for if you get runners on base. So in this case, now we have a lead. It's time to put the accelerator down, time to step on the gas a little bit so we can get as much separation as we can. So as we met, we told mom what to look for, or we told all of our guys, if you get on base, here's what you're looking for. So we have a lead. Uh, we give mom um, – cues on what to look for to be able to steal his base. We know that Leonard gets pitched really tough because he is so physical and he's so good. And this ended up working out. What you're about to see is uh, Mom gets his stolen base. Um, they, again, force a mistake. They throw it in the center field. Mom gets to third. And again, the way we think, because we are such an aggressive, positive offense, you see like Calvin's, bunt, uh, Calvin's swinging bunt was a perfect example. Every time we put on a drag bunt, that's what we see happening in our head. Every time we put on a push bunt, we see exactly what happened on mom's swing happen. Like three guys are going to go collide into each other and one guy's going to throw it in the first base. So we think really positively. And again, it would be easy to say, all right, we got our lead. Mom's not the best of runners, but we have a lead. We want to be able to press a little bit. And almost when we put on a stolen base, I almost always think, all right, that catcher's going to throw it in the center field or we steal third base and that catcher's going to throw it in the left field and we're going to get a run. But in this case, we were like, if we can get mom to second, be aggressive, Get Mom the second. Leonard, you know, Leonard is a good hitter. He can score on a single, but because he got to where he forced a mistake, got all the way to third base, now you're 90 feet away with Leonard up. And again, Leonard gets pitched tough. What, what does that mean? That means they throw a lot of strikeout pitches to Leonard. They would rather walk him or strike him out than let him, you know, hit a ball hard, which he's so capable of doing. So go ahead and let the play run right here. We told Mom what to look for, what kind of cues to make. Leonard's got a green light to be able to hit here. So you're going to see Mom get a great jump. Force that catcher to have to be really, really fast. Now they throw that ball into center field. Mom gets all the way to third. And you're going to see the excitement. And again, we've got more emotion, more excitement here because now we're starting to feel it. Now we can press the gas. Mom's excited. The team is excited. Now we're 90 feet away from scoring. Now, as a result of this, we didn't score, but he was 90 feet away. You can go ahead and pause it here. And coach, you can, you can take him back over to where we are now. Yeah, and Huey can help me here too with this play. This is uh, – so now – we, in this situation, we had bases loaded. And you're talking top of the 10th, 1-1 game. You're talking bases loaded, and there was nobody out. And so we get to this point here with Devereaux Harrison, our freshman. Um, and now you're, you're talking about a freshman on opening night, you know, coming in in this spot. 
Um, and, you know, he's in a situation where he's, his base is loaded and nobody out gets the one out and gets to a 2-2 count here. Um, and, you know, this is another – this is a cutter that he had just learned in the fall. And, you know, he throws a, a quality cutter here. And, you know, I'll let Huey talk about this back pick. But this is – this is a huge, huge, you know, uh, play in the game here. Um, so we'll let it roll here and we'll see the cutter and the swing and miss and then and we'll see the back pick and we'll pause it right after play. Yeah, um, I believe we had just called – you just called a mound meeting um, right either before this pitch or, I mean, before this batter or something along those lines. But their uh, center fielder was on first base and uh, he was just acting like a cheerleader up there, you know, loud and energetic and wasn't really paying attention to, uh, like, Cole or any anything other than trying to cheer on his, his guy. Uh, so Cole and me kind of at the same time looked at each other and, and called called a back pick right away, and we were just in sync. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that was huge just to get a little strike him out, throw him out. Uh, he threw it a little bit to my left side so of back pick it. So, I mean, I had to pick it and kind of spin with it to tag him. Uh, but he was just, he was hosed. Cole got rid of it really quick. And yeah, I mean, you can see the excitement in that clip. We were, we were fired up, ready to go. That was, that was fun. It's a dangerous play, obviously, especially when it's, when, when Huey had to pick that, cause you can imagine that play and him not picking that and it's a bad throw. And you know, this, even the cutter that's away, you know, he swings and his momentum is taking him that way towards first base, the hitter that is. So a lot of, a lot of bad can happen in that play as well. Back pick can go wrong. Huey doesn't pick that ball goes into right field two run score, you know, and, and it's, it's not a good situation. So it all kind of worked out where he threw a good pitch. Um, he got the swing and miss, made a, a decent throw. We got a good pick and a good pick and tag. And, uh, and so huge play right there of the game. So now we're down two to one. We had just given up a run in the top half of the of opening night. And you would think that we would be, you know, down kind of, you know, kicking ourselves, hanging our head a little bit, but we weren't. That's just not the, what we do. That's not what we're about. So our guys were pretty excited. Now, to lay some groundwork here, we met again, right, going into this inning. After you give up a run, we met. And there are some schools of thought that would say that you're going to, should you take a strike? Should you take until you get a strike in this situation? Now, I'm going to tell you, sometimes we would as an offense, but there's so many variables that go into it on when we would do that. We decided not to take a strike in this game, one, because we just wanted to feed him with confidence. I don't want to take the bat out of anybody's hand. Two, because everybody's one swing away from tying the game. Now, we can talk about the Blair Field effect, and you know it's hard to, to hit home runs at Blair Field, but we didn't want to squelch anybody's confidence at this point, although we had coming off some really poor offensive innings. One out, bottom of the 13th, now we're down. And he takes a fastball right down the middle that was not cued by us. And you can see that he's probably, he was a little frustrated, but it's his first at bat of the season. Call it nerves, whatever you want. Maybe he just wanted to see a pitch. I'm totally fine with all that. But as this at bat plays out, um, you're going to see a, a good at bat overall off of a freshman who had already thrown an inning and uh, he had already thrown an inning. So this is his second inning out there. And this is a freshman thrown for Cal. And he just puts together a really competitive at-bat. One of the things that surprised us all, as a side note, is how many fastballs this pitcher actually threw. He's a freshman, so again, we didn't have a lot of information on him to go into a scouting report. We had an idea, uh, and this was the second inning already. But we were surprised that he threw more fastballs than we expected, which is fine. Uh, we shouldn't be getting beat by fastballs. But now we're in a two-and-two two count. Now we're switching into a, you're going to see, you know, a little bit of a two-strike adjustment. So now he's into a two-strike approach. Does a really good job of staying competitive with a couple of these at-bats. Now, in the background, you just saw Roselle. Roselle's on deck at this point. And there is some, obviously, heavy consideration on what we do with Roselle's at-bat at this point. Through what we're thinking right now is, okay, what, who do we want to hit? Do we let Roselle hit if the, if, Carlson gets out. Who do we want to hit if somebody gets on? So there's Roselle in the background. You can see it. So as our we're, our head is swimming, right, we have three hitters that are ready – or two two hitters that are ready at this point to hit in Roselle's spot. And, again, it's going to depend on if there's a runner on or if there's not a runer on. If there's not a runner on, you want somebody to get on. So that would be more of like a, hey, who's our best chance to just get a base runner? 
And if there is a runner on, then it's going to be a little bit about who has enough power to be able to score Tanner from first or maybe even get a ball out. So as we're working through Tanner's competitive at bat, I'm going to tell you guys a little secret. Now, as he, he's going to draw a walk here, one thing that's happening right now, like I went over to the dugout right now and we had this conversation, because Greeley took a first pitch fastball for a strike and Carlson took a first pitch fastball for a strike, even though we didn't tell him to do that, I thought that the opponents were going to think that we were taking a strike because it looked like we were taking until we got a strike, which offensively a lot of times most teams would. So we went over and we had a conversation with Javi, Javi Rosales, and we said, look, they think they're, we're taking a strike. So you're going to get a first pitch fastball right down the middle. We need you to ambush that thing and do some damage with it and see what we can do. So this is why we hit Javier right here. We had already had a conversation with him. Um, we told him, you're going to get a first pitch fastball. Let's ambush this thing and do some damage. So this is exactly the scenario that comes up now. You can see how, how late Javier gets up here because we were, kind of, we were kind of talking him through this scenario a little bit as it went. So now Javier comes in to, to pinch hit. We told them they think we're taking a strike. Odds are you're going to get a fastball right down the middle and let's do some damage. So we got, we're down, we have runner on first base, and this is a 13. And we put Javi in there, obviously, because we think he does have a little bit of a power threat. You see Calvin Estrada on deck, which is a good scenario for us. If we can just stay out of a double play right here, Calvin's going to have a shot. which is another reason, like Danny mentioned earlier, Calvin in the leadoff spot, when you turn a lineup over, you're turning the lineup over to a one, a leadoff guy who can do some damage at any time. So we got exactly what we were talking about, and I'm not going to lie, I'll let you guys talk. I thought he got it. Does anybody else, you want to pause it right there? Because we got exactly what we wanted. Hobby put a good swing on it and made some good contact, but I thought he got it right there. Anybody else have anything to add? I, I jumped out of the dugout going crazy, thinking it was gone, and then – <laughs> had to jump back in the dugout real quick. I thought he got it. You know, I think it yeah. maybe a di even a, even I'm not even going to say a different day, but even at a different part in this game, if he hit that same ball, it, it's it would have gone out. But you know, as you could see, it it got cold later that this game went on. There was you could see the guy's breath. You know, there's some a lot of moisture in the air at this point, so it feels like it's two in the morning, um, and it just kind of <laughs> hung up there. All right, so now we have Cal, and again, he's throwing a lot of fastballs. We're not taking until we get a strike. Uh, Calvin's the type of hitter that can score a runner from first base because of the power that he has, so here we go. Great job by Cal, like, giving, giving Hobby some love right there. Like, you did everything that you – you gave us everything you had right there. You just couldn't get it out. So now we're two outs, runner on first. Jacob Huey is on deck, so that he's batting in the two spot. Again, you have Calvin, who's not a conventional, not a conventional leadoff hitter leading off. Pitcher who's throwing a lot of fastballs, and we're, we're not taking until we get a strike. So everybody has the green light to jump on the first pitch, and we got exactly what we wanted again. Cal jumps on this first pitch fastball, sneaks it by the first baseman. Now, Tanner Carlson is not a great runner. I am in a serious panic mode, I'm going to tell you that right now. Because can Tanner score, but the, the relay wasn't clean. Uh, that was a part of the decision that we made. Uh, and again, two outs, probably going to press the button right there almost no matter what, but it helped a lot because the relay wasn't clean. And so once we saw it wasn't a clean relay, then we can go ahead and send Tanner because he's not the most fleet of foot runner we have. I was a little bit nervous that that was going to be closer than it was, but they didn't make a clean relay, thank goodness. We had just tied the game up. We have one of our best runners on second we have one of our best hitters at the plate who is a senior that we have a lot of belief in and Jacob we're gonna I'm gonna go through because there's a lot of time right here so one uh you're gonna see that they take a lot of time to get this first pitch in and you it's obviously that they're trying they have a lefty in the bullpen they're trying to give him time he wasn't quite ready because they didn't they weren't expecting us to tie it so now they're scrambling to get a lefty ready in the pen so now we step off and this is where you're going to make the pitching change so you can go ahead and let this play Jacob, at this point, um, we have a meeting now that they bring in the lefty. We talk about this as an offense all the time. There's approaches that we have for this. Now, they bring in left on left. Lefties that are going to throw to lefties are typically going to throw their secondary pitch, which is a breaking ball that's tough for left-handers to hit a lot. And there's a base open. So we had talked about what kind of approach to have right here. Jacob, you want to – if we pause it right here, I'll let you take it, Jacob. What you remember – I know what we talked about, and I know what we put in, but what were you thinking 
Uh, yeah, well, so I had been up, at, uh, I think, two or three innings previous to this um, with, I think, bases loaded and ground into a double play. And, you know, I, I flushed it when I got onto the field. But, I mean, every time I stepped back in that dugout, every time I saw the people up there, I was like, dang, I want, I want my shot again to get the chance to, you know, be the hero. You know, I think the trust – that PD and, and our staff has and Jacob, you know, to, to keep him there. Cause you know, and I, I don't know at that point if we had anybody even off on the bench to be able to pinch hit there for a right-handed hitter, but uh, you know, to be able to stay with it with the left, that's the best scenario that, that, that Cal wanted, right. Was to, to have the left on left matchup there with Huey and, and they got it. And without any pinch hits or, or pinch hitter coming in, um, you know, that's right-handed to, uh, to counter that. So, uh, that's the faith that we have, and, and it you know, obviously worked out. So. And I'd say, too, um, one thing I've noticed about myself, especially is when I face left-handed hit, uh, pitchers, I tend to uh, go the opposite way a lot more, too, just because I, I try to keep my my uh, front shoulder from flying open, so I just keep it more simple and just kind of turn into even more of a contact hitter than I already am uh, when I face left-handed hitters so, or left-handed pitchers. So I was kind of looking down in that bullpen and, and hoping that I was going to face that lefty and that I was going to get a chance to at least. And you guys were going to let me swing the bat still because, uh, yeah, I was, I was ready to face that guy. I, I, I had my, my eyes set on that guy already um, before he came in. Thank you. Well, yeah, we just saw uh, Calvin got a great jump. That was another thing. When we get a chance to meet yeah. again, you know, we're talking about how he's going to pitch you, how he holds runners. So Calvin can you, got can you pause nice that for a second game. real quick? Um, you know, the, a lot of people were probably wondering why we chose to stole third there. And obviously, like Petey said, there, there's a lot of homework that goes into to making these decisions, right? The timing, the home plate was right. The looks were right. We had the right guy holding him at second base. And if you notice what that did to the infield in that 0-2 situation left on left, it basically split the whole left side of the field. The third baseman got caught off guard and he broke the third. The shortstop got caught moving to his left, you know, because um, Cal got such a good jump and he was kind of – moving to steal the base and so he started to break a little bit but the whole left side of the field was open so you know had he thrown a pitch that Huey could have got to you know maybe a fastball up is typically something that the, he'll hit through the left side um, there was a lot of room there for him that he could have utilized had that been a, a little bit better pitch that he could have handled and that's again that's an aggressive move that we made late in the game that catcher could have panicked and tried to throw Calvin out and that ball could have gone into left field and he could have scored so there's there's a lot of good that could have come from that and let me add let me add one thing too to that from a pitching standpoint now if we pause it here um now from a pitching standpoint you know that yes that guy you know base hit can score him from second base but now with him at third base and you have the left on left here you know when you're calling pitches it's it's now you got to think twice as to where the location of this pitch is going to be you have the winning run at third base you know you got a two strike count you know, for me, you have to really trust that it's not, there's not going to be a wild pitch. And see if you want to call a breaking ball, it can't get away from them. And so this is, it's a much, it makes the pitch uh, and this at bat much more difficult for the pitcher and the guy calling the pitches with a guy on third rather than a guy on second base. And this is the 13th consecutive inning that that catcher caught. He caught every inning of all three games and, and it's a long time for him to be back there block too. Almost got that one. Look at Calvin's energy again here. This is one of the things that's great about Calvin is his energy right here. He's going to pick up this bat. We, we all thought for a second that that was going to be the game-winning knock. Calvin's going to give Jacob a little bit of love. All right, we got this. It's, everything's all right. A little pat on the rump and let's go. You know, again, this was another really, really good two-strike at bat. You know, you saw Tanner, he battled from a, you know, from a two-strike situation to get the big walk that, that got this inning going. And you know, Huey battled this whole bat with two strikes pretty much. And and you notice he got that – he got those two fastballs there after we got the sto the, the, sto the steal of third, you know, yeah. because it's dangerous to call that breaking ball and get it thrown away and lose the game. And there we go. Finally did get a breaking ball. Finally did stay with it. And it's interesting to know – oh, as the, as the anarchy ensues. It's interesting <laughs> to know. I wonder where the third baseman would have been playing if Calvin was still on second base. You know, would he have been as far off the line? Would he have shifted a little bit more? So a lot of scenarios that happened there that were worked in our favor. All, <laughs> and they were hard fought, well-deserved. And they deserve this kind of celebration right here. And I sat back uh, on a slider that he threw uh, 
on the outer half of the plate and just kind of <laughs> flicked one into left field because I figured, you know, with Cal, like you were saying, with Calvin on second base, all I have to do is get a ball into the grass and uh, and that's game over with that guy's wheels. So, I, I like I said, I just flicked a slider over the, down the left field line um, and, yeah, pretty much the rest is history. Our players deserve this celebration. This kind of uh, enthusiasm is what, you know, what you coach for. Uh, we've been on the other end of this too, but boy, were we anxious to have this happen with our boys and that kind of celebration was well-deserved. So we'll turn it back over to you, coach, and uh, good job, you guys. Um, that was really fun. And I will mention that, you know, that was obviously the first game of the season for our first, you know, year uh, coming in was was pretty electric and, and we had great performances uh, all the way around against a, a you know, an unbelievable opponent like Cal. We have so much respect for those guys and, and, and that program and what Mike knew and those guys have, you know, have done there. And so, um, you know, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. This was a lot of fun. Uh, hope to do it again. And, uh, but again, that's, that's a good game between two really, really good teams, competitive teams on opening night. And uh, you just couldn't ask for, for a, a better one. And, and uh, that was a long one for sure, but, uh, but we really enjoyed it. So thank you guys for, uh, for checking it out and hope to do it again soon.